Good morning. It's good to be able to share with you this morning. And I trust that you're all holding up as we continue in our lockdown status. I know that many, especially of those of you who are living on your own, are not finding it very easy at the moment and are battling. And it's in this time that we need to keep our eyes on our Lord and listen to his voice. Remember his words from last week which Lou shared with us. Let not your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. With Jesus telling us, telling us of going to prepare a place for us and his promise of coming back for us. This week he continues to assure us of his presence that we will never be alone. In the light of the huge struggles we face in the world today, this is good news indeed. So let's listen to his words from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 15 to 21. Jesus promises the Holy Spirit. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help, with, help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. This is the word of the Lord. One of my first, most favourite characters is Winnie the Pooh, and of course the whole cast of his friends that surround him. I only discovered Christopher Robin and Winnie the Pooh when I was 15, much to my mother's horror. She couldn't believe that she hadn't read those stories to us as little ones. But I was delighted at my new find. The wisdom and humour of those stories so often is lost on little ones. But at that age, I really appreciated it and all of those characters. This morning, I'm going to share one of those conversations between Pooh and Piglet with you. Today was a difficult day, said Pooh. There was a pause. Do you want to talk about it? asked Piglet. No, said Pooh after a bit. No, I don't think so. That's okay, said Piglet. And he came and sat down beside his friend. What are you doing? asked Pooh. Nothing really, said Piglet. Only I know what difficult days are like. I quite often don't feel like talking about it on my difficult day, either. But goodness, continued Piglet, difficult days are so much easier when you know you've got someone there for you. And I will always be there for you, Pooh. And as Pooh sat there, working through in his head his difficult day, while the solid, reliable piglet sat next to him quietly, swinging his little legs, he thought that his best friend had never been more right. It's so much easier when you know you've got someone there for you. In this chapter of John, Jesus is preparing his disciples for his death, preparing them with the fact that he is going away. And you can understand their dismay. They battle to come to terms with what he is saying, but he doesn't leave them without hope. He tells them that he will not leave them as orphans. He promises another counselor who will be with them forever. Up, of, up until now, Jesus has been their counsellor, their teacher, their comforter, and their friend. 
but now he promises the spirit of truth, the spirit who will abide in them and stay with them forever. And he makes that same promise to us. In John 1 verse 12 we read, Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. And here we find the fulfillment of that promise. Holy Spirit will abide in us. We are not orphaned. We are not abandoned. We are in relationship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Emmanuel, God with us. Through his living, sanctifying Holy Spirit. In verse 20, Jesus said, You will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. The three persons of the Trinity live in one another, and the beautiful thing is that Jesus includes us. We too belong in that community of love. God is taking us to our truest home to live in the very heart of the Trinity of love. This is such a great comfort to us to us who share in the pain and suffering of ordinary life, to know that the Spirit is with us always. And it's of special comfort to those who the world casts aside, the poor, the homeless, racial and ethnic minorities, the sick, the dying, the prisoner and the refugee. It's so much easier when you know you have one, someone there for you. And Holy Spirit is always there for us. And it is comforting to know that the Spirit that is in us never gives up on us. We need to keep reminding ourselves that God is here, no matter how we feel or think or see. Even when our own actions and our doubts tell us that he has deserted us. We are never alone. He is present in every breath we take in and every breath we let out. The comforter, the advocate, the counsellor, the consoler. Not judging, but loving. You see, as Oswald Chambers, Chambers so succinctly puts it, faith is not a pathetic sentiment, but robust, vigorous confidence built on the fact that God is holy love. By accepting and getting to know the spirit that lives in us, by acknowledging and learning on, leaning sorry, on the one who comes alongside to encourage, the one who allows the gift of struggle but never leaves us to face it alone, we are able to share with others. Never forget that God's love is inexhaustible. And that is the bedrock from which we can love others. We are never alone. Our souls know what they need. Sometimes all they need is to know that they are not alone. So our question today is this. Are we willing to embrace God's presence and rest in his strength even as we battle with a crisis in our world? Are we ready to remember to say yes to the presence of the Spirit within us? We need to check that our lives are increasing in the process of saying yes and that there is not too much no. We need to just receive and to love, for it is in Him that we live and move and have our being. Jesus begins today reading with the words, If you love me, you will obey my commands. Or as the message translation puts it, If you love me, show it by doing what I've told you to. When we come to understand the kind of love that God has for us, then living out Christ's command to love one another can become as natural as breathing. 
Psalm 66 reminds us of God's faithfulness. Verse 12, we went through fire and water, but you brought us to a place of abundance. Verse 16 to 19, come and hear all of you who fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. I cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened and heard my prayer. What had God done? He had listened. He had heard. And so the psalmist is calling out to all who will listen to hear his story. And we are called to share our stories. To tell others who God is. To tell of his faithfulness. What he has done for us and of his love. In our reading from 1 Peter, Peter urges the early Christians to be who they are meant to be, images of Christ in a broken world. And their challenge, and ours as well, is to be able to give account of their hope, but to do it with gentleness and respect. Our confidence in our hope in Jesus does not lead to browbeating or forceful pressure for submission. Our confidence is in his love. The love that raised Jesus from the dead is stronger than the hate or fear that we might face in our broken world. And that is the love that he asks us to share. We are not alone and neither does anyone else need to be. That is our story. It's so much easier when you know that you have someone there for you. Amen.